Less than a year out from general elections in India, it's turning into a race between one man and everybody else. A recent survey showed 52% of voters think the current Prime Minister Narendra Modi is still the right person for the top job. And Modi's Hindu nationalist BJP are certainly confident of his ability to win elections and smash his political opponents, portraying the Saffron Party leader as a political terminator. This post on their official X or Twitter account saying, 2024, I'll be back. The BJP also tells India's opposition parties to dream on if they think Narendra Modi can be defeated. The terminator, they say, always wins. The opposition, though, thinks not. More than 20 of India's opposition parties have now come together under the banner of the Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance, or India for short. The aim? To put up candidates in constituent parties' strongholds against the BJP. The alliance is hoping jointly contesting elections like that will give them the collective numbers to form the next government. DW correspondent Adil Bhatt travelled to Mumbai to witness an important meeting of this alliance. In a message of unity and display of strength, the leaders of the opposition India Alliance are gathering for a third big meeting, this time in Mumbai, India's financial capital. It's a big day for them. 68 leaders from 28 political parties are discussing their election strategies for the upcoming 2024 election. But their most important decision was taken in July, when opposition parties announced they would contest the national elections together. If the parties on this stage unite, it is impossible for the BJP to win an election. A 14-member coordination committee has been formed to flesh out the election campaign and seat-sharing arrangements in different states to avoid splitting votes in favor of Modi's party. Pawan Khera, the national spokesperson of the Indian National Congress, says that a united opposition is vital to prevent any further erosion of democracy by the ruling government. Look at the institutions, the way they are trying to uh, uh, hijack the election commission, the appointment of the chief election commissioner, the way they have misused investigative agencies against the opposition leaders. Today, these investigative agencies are completely puppets of the government. But to the opposition parties, it's not just democracy under threat. The line says it will also be taking on the politics of hate, which has polarized large parts of the country. We are fighting for the very ethos of India, the very essence of India, which is unity and diversity. Respecting our diversity and staying united, treating all our citizens equally. That is what the idea of India is, and we are fighting for that. Though the opposition alliance is gaining momentum, Opinion on the streets is sharply divided. This opposition alliance is wasting its time if they think they will defeat Modi. Modi has done great work and he enjoys such support from the masses, it will be impossible to defeat him. An environment of hatred has been created in the country. The rising inflation, the increase in unemployment, women's safety, farmer suicides. Because of all of this, the alliance is necessary. This is the third time that political parties from across the country have come together to set a platform which could challenge the BJP. But it remains to be seen if they will be able to overcome their political differences to present a united front to win the upcoming elections. The ruling BJP is certainly dismissive when we ask them if they are concerned about the opposition alliance. We are here to stay. 2024 is a foregone solution that it is under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi that we will come back to power. But with elections not expected for a while, there is still time before the vote. The opposition alliance is preparing for more such meetings, joint rallies and marches to mobilize support. To what extent it is successful will determine the outcome of India's next election.
And joining me now for more context is journalist Ashutosh. He's co-founder of the news portal satyahindi.com. And before that was active in politics for some years as a member of the opposition Aam Admi Party. Ashutosh, three meetings so far of the India Alliance. Are you satisfied with the way it's shaping up? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because a lot many people had a lot of apprehensions uh, from the beginning itself because... Uh, uh, coming together of more than 26 political parties uh, is always a very, very difficult task because uh, there are a lot of differences, ideological differences. There are the egos between the within the political leaders. Uh, but from the Patna to Mumbai, I think the journey has been very good from the opposition point of view. And uh, the smoothness with which they have formed this India group and they came out with a coordination committee, I think it's, a, uh, it, it, it's pretty good from their, from their perspective. You were a member of the Aam Aadmi Party. Look at its rivalry with the Congress in Delhi and Punjab. The left party is against the Congress in Kerala, for instance. And you also have the instance of West Bengal and the Trinamool Congress. I mean, how will these parties that are on any given day competitors against each other be able to come together to defeat the BJP and also share seats at the national level? See, that, that again is important because you have raised a very important point because these are the political parties with different states. They are fighting against each other and they have been fighting against each other. Uh, but thanks to Narendra Modi and the use of their uh, investigating agencies, that now these political parties have realized that, that now if they don't come together and if Modi comes back again in 2024, then there will be no existence of these political parties. So that's one reason that today they have uh, forgotten their differences and they have tried to come together to, to have a one voice. Uh, I don't see these, uh, uh, these differences in terms of uh, seat sharing will be a major obstacle. In, obstacle. Uh, because today they are fighting for their own existence. And uh, so like, uh, take, take the case in Delhi. Amadi party has completely wiped out Congress uh, from, the, uh, from the state of Delhi. Uh, but... In the parliamentary election, if you look at in 2019 parliamentary elections, it is not the Ahmadi party, but it is the Congress party, which came second to BJP. And uh, with the 22% vote share, and the Ahmadi party is 18% vote share. So if you go purely by the by the parliamentary elections, then uh, Congress uh, uh, claim is much bigger than Ahmadi party. Similar uh, things can happen in Bengal also, where the Congress party has been fighting with Mamta Banerjee and left, and same in, in Kerala. Uh, what I see is that uh, since the realization is very serious, they know that they are fighting the existential crisis. So these little uh, seat sharing obstacles will not be a major stumbling block. And I don't see much happening over there. Uh, as you remember, uh, in, in the Mumbai, uh, many political parties has, has said that uh, they have to uh, make sacrifices. And that's the motto there. We understand the thing about sacrifice, but at the end of the day, Ajitosh, won't these parties have to go up against the persona of Narendra Modi, a man who, according to one poll at least recently, some 52% of Indians want to see as prime minister for the third time in a row? Oh, yes, there, there is no doubt about it. Mr. Narendra Modi is hugely popular, uh, but, his, uh, but his image has taken dent of late. Uh, I... I I know which uh, survey you're talking about, but the same survey has also uh, underlined one fact that on the front of uh, unemployment, 72% of the population, 72% of the people surveyed had said the situation is very serious. And uh, similarly, the 62% pop, uh, uh, 62% of those who were surveyed by the agency has said that uh, their financial status is not going to improve, rather it's going to worsen. So the price rise, uh, unemployment, these are huge issues these days. And uh, unemployment is certainly is something which is going to damage uh, government. There's no doubt that Mr. Modi is very popular. There is a high approval rating for the, for the Modi government. But he has many, uh, many questions to answer. And I don't see he has, any, he has many answers to that. Despite all these questions to answer and having no answers to it, he remains popular. The question I want to ask you for our viewers is, what is it about Narendra Modi that makes him so popular? Uh, two, three things. I think that the, the answer is very simple, but uh, <laughs> let's not simplify the whole thing. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Narendra Modi has, uh, is genius in terms of communicating with the, uh, with the masses. Uh, I think nobody in, in India can match him on that front. Secondly, he controls narrative. 
the way he has controlled uh, uh, the, the television channels and the media, so nobody has guts to ask a question. Uh, compare this with Manmohan Singh government. Every TV channel, every newspaper used to write against him day in and day out. So, Mr. Narendra Modi's success lies because he controls narrative and nobody, no uh, journalist, or the, no, uh, uh, no TV channel or the newspaper has guts to ask questions. So, if, when he's not asked questions, he's not pinned down by, by the media. Obviously, uh, people don't get the other perspective also. Just as a final question to you, Ashutosh, what do you say, look in your crystal ball, can the India Alliance take on the BJP and defeat Narendra Modi in 2024? I wish I, I, I could know the answer. Uh, the fact is that this election, 2024 parliamentary election, is not like 2014 parliamentary election or 2019 parliamentary election. In these two elections, opposition, uh, in 2014, it was basically a rejection of Manmohan Singh government and the people are emotionally very hurt by, uh, by the corruption charges. So there was no fight between the Congress and the, and the BJP. In 2019, uh, till the Pulwama happened, I think it was uh, it was a tough battle between the between the opposition and the and and, and the BJP. But once uh, this hyper nationalism uh, uh, took over uh, through the Balakot uh, surgical strike, I think there was no competition left. In my opinion, 2024 election is is the first normal election in the last 10 years, and uh, two things this is going to define this: one, the 10 years anti incumbency, and second is the opposition unity index. And this opposition unity index, which was absent in 2014 and 2019. So uh, this is going to make uh, the battle very tough. I'm not guessing whether Narendra Modi is going to win or Narendra Modi is going to lose. But this battle is going to be very, very interesting and very, very intriguing also. We'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much uh, for sharing your views with us, Ashutosh.